Hey everybody, Dan Rubino here, executive editor of Windows Central, and we're back from the Microsoft event here in New York City. And I'm gonna share some thoughts with you about Windows 10 S and that Surface laptop and what I think, and I'm gonna answer some of your questions. Stay tuned. All right, so the first question is, what's the deal with Windows 10 S? So if you watch this announcement, Microsoft gave a pretty good explanation about this, but I wanted to talk about why this isn't Windows RT, because I see a lot of people going, this is just the same thing repeated again. First of all, there's a lot of differences here. One, there's a huge ecosystem now involved. There's, of course, the Intune management stuff for schools. There's also this new hardware that's out there. But Windows 10 S is actually a really interesting play. So if you don't know, Windows 10 S can't run executable apps. So it's known as the classic desktop applications, but it does run all the applications through the Windows Store. Why is that not like Windows RT? Well, for one, we have Project Centennial now. So now Windows 32 apps that go through the store can run on this device. This is also a full x86 processor and not an ARM one, which is what the original Surface RT did. So those are some massive changes there. But there's also this other thing here, which is if you don't want to stay with Windows 10 S, you can just upgrade to Pro. It's only $49. Now, to put that in perspective, a Pro license is actually, I think, about $200. So that's quite a bit of savings. Even better, initially, if you buy the Surface laptop, you're going to be able to upgrade to Pro for free. So there's actually no lock in here. Once you upgrade to Pro, you can now install any app you want to. And there's no performance degradation. Now, if you end up installing, say, five antivirus programs, okay, you're going to probably see some differences there. But for the most part, these are the exact same operating systems. Now, I think this is really important. It's a huge shift for Microsoft because the more they get people into the Microsoft ecosystem and just relying on the store, as more stuff comes in through Project Centennial to that store, well, pretty soon you don't need to install executable files and they're going to get people onto this sort of Microsoft ecosystem that's like tablet based. That plays into mobile in a couple of years. So just keep that in mind. So who is the Surface Laptop for? Now Microsoft spent a lot of this event covering K through 12 and that's not actually what this device is. This is meant for college kids. It's going out to the MacBook and MacBook Air markets. If you've ever been to a college campus, there are plenty of Apple products on there. I think this is a smart move for them to do this. They're offering a premium, really nice device that's gonna last you four years for college students. Of course, if you just want a light laptop computer, this is also a great solution as well. But don't forget, this is a Core i5 and Core i7 processor. I actually count myself amongst the people here who want this device. I've talked about it in the past. I'm not a huge tablet fan. I don't use the pen all that often. So this device actually seems like a really good play for me and a lot of other people. Okay, next question. How long did it take Microsoft to make the Surface laptop? The answer, two years. Now, it's actually a little bit more than that, right? There was some planning that was involved initially, but once they committed to it and decided we're gonna make this happen, it was a two year project. It takes a lot of time to invent this technology that's used here. There's also a lot of iterations that they go through. And I've always mentioned this before. The Surface team's mantra is, we don't ship until it's ready. So it's ready and it took two years. All right, next question. Why would Microsoft even create a laptop? If you look at Surface history, it's all about creating new categories. You look at the original Surface Pro, it's a two-in-one tablet that becomes a laptop. Surface Book is more like a laptop that becomes a tablet. And if you take a look at the Surface Studio, it's now a desktop PC that's meant for artists and those of the creative type. So why would you make a laptop which is just an iteration on a classic design? Well, at least the engineers really enjoy the challenge. So there is that aspect. They relish the idea of trying to make this thing even better. And I think they succeeded. The bigger question though is like why have this there it's not a new category and last i checked hp dell lenovo were all crushing it in the laptop range well when i talked to microsoft they said service is about a family it's experiences so you're going to have a laptop you have a tablet you have a two-in-one you have the surface studio and so they really want this laptop to sort of finish off that experience it's a little bit of a weird explanation but i think it totally makes sense it also lends credence to the idea that they're not done with creating surfaces so we can see new devices coming out for new categories but maybe someday we'll even see a mobile phone, maybe. All right, and the final question, I know this is bugging a lot of you. Why is there no USB type C? And I actually kind of agree. I think this should have type C, but here's the explanation when I asked them. USB type A is still used by the majority of people. Now, Microsoft absolutely acknowledges we are in a transitionary period between the two techs, but 
you go to a college campus, most people are gonna be using USB type A. You have thumb drives, you have mice, you have cameras, you have phones, all those are selling those legacy systems. So the next question is, so why not just put on type C anyway? That comes down to room. There just wasn't any space. If you go to the videos here, watching Surface Laptop when they open it up, there's no room on the inside to put basically another port despite us wanting one. Now, Mark and I were discussing this, our videographer here, about why not put on Type-C instead of that display port, because display port seems like one of those technologies you can abandon. And I kind of agree here. I'm not really 100% sure why they didn't do that. My guess is because if you put Type-C port in instead of display port, now you have to toggle with Thunderbolt 3, and that's a whole other thing. That's You have more power requirements, more space on the motherboard. So there are some constraints there going with Thunderbolt 3, but Microsoft did tell me they will do Thunderbolt 3 at some point in the future, but they consider it's a transitionary period right now, so it's USB type A. So those are some quick answers to the questions regarding Surface Laptop and Windows 10 S. Now I know you have more questions, so leave those below and I'll try to answer those over the next few weeks. We'll also be doing a review of the Surface Laptop in the next few weeks as well. So stay tuned for that. If you like this channel, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, buddy. Processor. So it's very powerful and I count that operations to get it right, but they're very happy with the way, you know, negative skin. Sorry.